In a quiet corner of Wirral, Merseyside, a community was shattered by a brutal and senseless act of violence. This is the story of Hannah Windsor, a bright and promising young woman whose life was tragically cut short. Hannah Windsor, a 17-year-old girl. Growing up in Wirral, Merseyside, Hannah faced challenges from an early age due to her learning disabilities. Despite these obstacles, she attended Clare Mount Sports College in Moraton, a school specifically designed to support children with learning disabilities. Despite the challenges she faced, Hannah's positive qualities shone through. Described by her family and friends as caring, vibrant, and compassionate, Hannah was known for her infectious smile and willingness to help others. She had a close-knit relationship with her family, particularly her mother, Gaynor Murray, who described her as my baby and spoke fondly of her daughter's caring nature. In terms of her aspirations, Hannah was like any other teenager, dreaming of a bright future ahead. She was enrolled as a college student at Wirral Metropolitan College, demonstrating her commitment to pursuing her education despite any obstacles she encountered. However, her life took a tragic turn when she met Adam Lewis, an 18-year-old teenager from Wirral, Merseyside. Lewis's early years were marked by challenges, including learning difficulties and a low IQ. Growing up, he struggled academically and socially, often feeling isolated and misunderstood. Despite attending a special school for children with learning disabilities, Lewis faced difficulties in forming meaningful relationships and navigating the complexities of everyday life. His diagnosis of Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, ADHD, further compounded his difficulties, affecting his ability to concentrate, regulate his emotions, and make sound decisions. When Adam was around nine, his parents lost custody rights due to their making no efforts to rectify the issues, and he was subsequently sent to live with his grandparents. By all accounts, his grandparents did everything they could to heal whatever trauma he had faced in his short years, but it seemed like the damage had already been done. Hannah had known Lewis since their days as pupils at Clare Mount Sports College in Moraton. Despite their initial connection, they faced the typical ups and downs of teenage relationships. After being together for seven months, they went through the breakups. However, six weeks before the tragic events occur, they reunited. Later, on May 11, 2012, Adam Lewis broke into the flat of his sister's ex-boyfriend on Orchard Road, stealing items including a pair of trainers and a BB gun. He also set the flat on fire. His actions also put the lives of others who lived nearby in great danger. This criminal act marks the beginning of a downward spiral of violence and recklessness. After the burglary, Lewis went on the run. He then set up a camp in Woodland on Bidstown Hill, fearing he was being hunted by the police. After setting up camp, he called Hannah and asked her to meet. However, during the call, he ended up telling her about the burglary. With the information he had divulged, she made the decision to visit the police station and provide a full account of the arson and burglary. On 14th of May, she provided her statement to the police. Before leaving, the police handed Hannah a note containing a contact number she could use to reach the investigators directly. On that same day, Hannah, unaware of Lewis's criminal activities, reconnects with him and agrees to meet. Despite warnings from police about Lewis's dangerous behavior and her knowledge of his involvement in arson, Hannah persists in seeking him out, driven by a desire to help or confront him. Hannah meets Lewis in a secluded woodland area on Bidstown Hill, Wirral. What transpired from this point onwards remains unclear. However, according to police beliefs, while the two were together at the campsite, Adam learned that Hannah had contacted the police and provided them with information about his crimes. As hours passed and there was no sign of Hannah, her family immediately reported her missing to the authorities and began searching for her on their own. They distributed flyers, shared information on social media, and reached out to local communities for support in locating her. As the investigation progressed, they collaborated closely with law enforcement providing any information or assistance they could to help find Hannah. 
Despite the devastating circumstances, they remained resilient and determined to do everything possible to bring her home safely. The authorities launched a comprehensive search effort, utilizing resources such as helicopters, search dogs, and volunteers to scour the area where Hannah was last seen. They conducted interviews, gathered evidence, and analyzed CCTV footage in hopes of uncovering clues about her disappearance. The community also rallied together, organizing search parties and distributing missing person posters throughout the area. Despite their tireless efforts, days passed with no sign of Hannah, intensifying concerns about her safety and well-being. On May 19th, Hannah's body was discovered. When investigators found Hannah's body, they discovered a scene of unimaginable horror. She was partially clothed and hidden under leaves, twigs, and dirt in woodland on Bidzun Hill. The extent of her injuries was highly distressing, indicating a sustained and brutal attack. She had been restrained and tied to a tree, sexually assaulted, stabbed repeatedly, and suffered multiple other knife wounds to her chest, abdomen, and back. Her mouth had been covered with surgical tape, and she also had been strangled. A post-mortem examination revealed the extent of Hannah's injuries, which included severe wounds in her genital area and evidence of sexual assaults. The pathologist's report described the injuries as highly distressing and indicative of torture. Some injuries were inflicted after death, suggesting a continued disregard for Hannah's humanity even in her final moments. The gruesome nature of her injuries shocks the community and law enforcement officials, prompting a widespread investigation into her murder. As the search continued, detectives discovered a torn note near Adam Lewis's campsite, indicating potential contact between Hannah and the police. This finding raised suspicions and prompted further investigation into Lewis's possible involvement in Hannah's disappearance. This surveillance footage shows Hannah Windsor walks up Bidston Hill, Wirral, to the campsite of the Lewis. Utilizing surveillance footage, witness accounts, and investigative leads, law enforcement eventually located Lewis sleeping rough at a railway station two days after Hannah vanished. An officer conducted a search of the police national computer database, which revealed that he was wanted for burglary and arson. Adam was subsequently arrested at the railway station. This breakthrough in locating Lewis was pivotal in advancing the investigation. But later, he was released on bail. After being released, he returned home. Upon arriving home, his sister asked him whether he had committed the crime or not. He then disclosed all the details to his sister. After hearing about his heinous crime, she immediately informed her grandfather. They promptly called the police, leading to his arrest. Adam Lewis was tried for the brutal murder of Hannah Windsor. During the court hearings, Adam Lewis initially denied murdering Hannah Windsor, but later changed his plea to guilty. The prosecution presented compelling evidence detailing the brutal nature of the crime, including forensic findings and witness testimony. Lewis showed little emotion as the judge described the chilling details of Hannah's torture and murder. Members of Hannah's family sobbed as they listened to the proceedings, highlighting the emotional toll the crime had taken on them. Ultimately, Lewis was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum term of 22 years for the murder. Additionally, Lewis received concurrent sentences for the sexual assaults, burglary, and arson charges he admitted. After he got sentenced to 22 years in prison, many people disagreed with the decision. They thought his punishment wasn't enough for the terrible things he did to Hannah Windsor. Some people believed he should have gotten a harsher punishment, like life in prison. The controversy was mainly because of how brutal Hannah's murder was and because Adam Lewis didn't show any remorse for what he did. People felt like 22 years wasn't fair considering the pain he caused. This situation also made people think about how the legal system deals with criminals who have mental health problems like Adam Lewis. Some wondered if the rules and punishments should change to make sure people who commit such awful crimes face more serious consequences. The severity of the sentence reflected the egregious nature of the crime and the need to ensure public safety by incapacitating the perpetrator for an extended period. After hearing the public demands, the court decided to implement two special rules. First, 
he wouldn't be let out of prison automatically after 22 years. Instead, a group of people would decide if it was safe to let him out. Second, even if he was let out, he'd still have to follow strict rules for the rest of his life. If he broke any of these rules, he could go back to prison. Prior to the murder of Hannah Windsor, Lewis's behavior had already exhibited concerning patterns. His criminal history dates back to the age of 10, with offenses ranging from dishonesty to assault. These early brushes with the law hinted at a propensity for impulsive and reckless behavior, as well as a disregard for societal norms and consequences. Moreover, Lewis's substance abuse, including harmful alcohol and cannabis use, suggests a vulnerability to self-destructive behaviors and an inability to cope with life's challenges in healthy ways. Despite the warning signs and red flags, Lewis's descent into violence and cruelty caught many by surprise, underscoring the complexity of human behavior and the challenges of identifying and addressing underlying issues before tragedy strikes. Hannah's family expressed a mix of relief and sorrow. They found some solace in knowing that justice had been served for their daughter, but the pain of their loss remained palpable. Outside the courtroom, Hannah's mother, Gaynor Murray, burst into tears, expressing her hatred towards Lewis and her profound grief over the loss of her daughter. Despite the sentencing, the family knew that nothing could bring Hannah back, but they found some measure of peace in knowing that Lewis would be held accountable for his actions. Meanwhile, law enforcement officials and prosecutors reflected on the case, acknowledging the collaborative efforts that led to Lewis's arrest and conviction. Throughout the days leading up to the murder, there were several warning signs and missed opportunities for intervention. Despite Hannah's interactions with police officers and her intent to report Lewis's whereabouts, her efforts were met with limited success. Lewis's history of criminal behavior, coupled with his escalating violence and substance abuse, should have raised red flags and prompted more proactive measures to protect both him and his potential victims. While the case of Hannah Windsor's murder is a tragic and sobering reminder of the realities of domestic violence and mental health challenges, it also serves as a call to action for systemic change and collective efforts to create safer and more supportive communities for all.